And what better person to talk about that? We always love having her on. It would be Congresswoman Dina Titus joining us right now on the line. Uh, Congresswoman, thank you so much for being here. How are you? Hey, what's up, Dina? Well, thank you for having me. Doing pretty well. Yeah, uh, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, down the days. <laughs> yes, exactly. We all are. I have to ask you about this uh, because uh, being on the Intelligence Committee, this is some very disturbing news, uh, Congresswoman, that we just learned about the uh, governor of Michigan. Apparently now the FBI is charging six men accused in this plot to kidnap the Michigan governor. What uh, uh, Gretchen Whitmer, of course, we're talking about. What do you make about this? I mean, this is really, really disgusting. Well, you know, they're tied to a militia group, so it's really uh – Scary. I'm not on the Intelligence Committee. I'm on Homeland Security, right, so correct. we often overlap. But right. uh, I'm just hearing it as you are hearing it in the news. We haven't had a briefing on it yet, but I'm sure we probably will. But when you hear the President of the United States, he goes on Twitter when all this stuff is going on, when he had all those militia members out outside her office, liberate Michigan, stand back and stand by, and talking about the Proud Boys. What goes through your mind when you hear that? Well, the president's words carry weight, and people pay attention to what he says. You know, he started out in Charlottesville by saying there are good people on both sides when you had those people with the torches and shouting anti-Semitic and racist comments. And now the stand back and stand by, stand by sounds to me like be ready to take action. Right. Uh, We've seen some of that here in Nevada, in Carson City, around the governor's mansion. Correct. People come heavily armed, you know, they think they're going to liberate Nevada. It's it's very frightening, and we the president should be bringing people together, not encouraging this kind of violence. Couldn't agree with you more, Congresswoman. I want to get your thoughts on the debate last night. My personal opinions in a nutshell, I'm not sure anybody won the debate or lost the debate. I don't think, uh, uh, you know, uh, Kamala Harris lost anybody. I don't think Pence did either. Do you think it moved the needle one way or the other? And what are your opinions on the debate? Well, it showed after the debate in a, a quick poll that people thought Kamala Harris won the debate because uh, Pence was just so... Uh, and unempathetic, just spewed out a lot of things that obviously weren't true. And she came out strong saying that you've got to defend your record in the worst economy and the worst uh, pandemic this country has seen maybe ever. But if you're right, I don't think that the numbers will change much in terms of who people are going to vote for because so many people have already made up their mind. And I think the fly stole the show. Yeah, I tend to agree with you. The fly definitely did steal the show. We talked about it a little bit. Quite funny, to say the least. What would you do if you were on a stage debating an opponent and you saw that person had a fly on their head for two minutes? <laughs> would you say something, uh, Dina Titus? I'm just I'm just curious. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think you'd try to ignore it. I, I wouldn't want it to be swarming around my head, but it kind of got stuck there in Pence's hair. <laughs> it did. It did. That's I for sure. A lot of people did no question. All right, so let's talk about some serious subjects. That is the coronavirus. What has taken yeah. place in the White House? Not just the mm-hmm. president, but many people around him that have contracted the virus. It appears to me that uh, the White House, at least some of his doctors, were withholding some information to the general public, particularly about his lungs and when and when he was not on oxygen. When was the last time he tested? Uh, when was the first time he tested positive, uh, negative? Uh, a lot of things that are unanswered. What do you make of all this, uh, Congresswoman? Well, that's right. The doctors have been very vague, and they've hidden behind, oh, the the patient's rights to privacy. But, you know, the patient is the president of the United States. The people have a right to know what kind of shape he's in, but they're not really telling that. And also, it's very interesting. They won't admit to when he tested because he doesn't want to be responsible, I guess, for being the super spreader. It's, uh, we believe that after he knew he had it, he went to the golf course in New Jersey, had an indoor fundraiser, and then they had the event for the announcement of his nomination to the Supreme Court with all of those people sitting very close together, no mask, and a half a dozen of them who are either in the Senate, who were in attendance, or from the staff of the White House, have now come down with or tested positive with the virus. So there's no way you can say that the White House is in the center for this pandemic. What would you say, Congresswoman, to some people out there that think that the, this this could be Democrats and that uh, they might have targeted Donald Trump, that there might be some behind-the-scenes scheme that perhaps it doesn't make any sense that all these Republicans contracted the coronavirus in the White House at the same time? What would you say to a conspiracy theorist like that? 
Well, I'd say they're ridiculous. Of course, you're not going to uh, try to give somebody coronavirus. I'm a, I hope the president has a quick and full recovery, and I'm no fan of the president. But right. you certainly don't play with people's lives and their health. That's what we've been saying all along. They're the ones who have been so casual about it and refused to wear a mask as the Republicans who got it because they're the ones who are just flaunting the rules that have been uh, suggested or handed down by the health experts. Agree. I think that's the logical answer, and that's what I've been saying uh, all along. Speaking of caring about people, Congresswoman, I know you care about this stimulus package. You want to help people, particularly your constituents and, and those that are here in Las Vegas and the state of Nevada. It seems like President Trump is playing with this stimulus package. One day he's against it, the next week he's for it, and now he's saying he doesn't want to even address it, perhaps until after the election. What would you say to the president? How do you think he's handling this situation? And do you consider it somewhat of a threat to the American people that he doesn't want to do it now until after the election when he claims he's going to be voted back in? Well, it started with McConnell, you know, when we we have sent two uh, packages over, one about $3 trillion, one a little over $2 trillion. We were compromising in the right direction. And they said, well, you need to take a pause. And you well know that the people in Las Vegas can't afford to take a pause because we still have the highest unemployment in the country, about double what the national average is. Then the president was, going, like you say, was going to do it. Then he wasn't. Then he was going to pick winners and losers and give some funding to airlines, but not to other people. That's not going to work. You've got to help everybody at one time. And then just in a fit of peak, he said, well, we're not going to do it until after I win, and then we'll do it really big and really beautiful. Well, that's just, you know, that's ridiculous. That's another month that people in Las Vegas are worried about unemployment or small businesses closing or, uh, you know, their children getting back to school. It's, it's just not the way to get the economy back. Even the head of the Federal Reserve Board said better to invest too much than too little at this point. Sure. No, no question. If you're just joining us, we're speaking with Congresswoman Dina Titus. Congresswoman, uh, there are still people, not just in the state of Nevada, but across the country, that refuse to wear a mask. Uh, what did you make? Let's start with the president. What did you? Because we haven't talked to you in a little while. The president, yeah. as you know, several weeks ago held a campaign rally just outside of Reno and in Henderson. Let's focus on Henderson. I believe it mm -hmm. was an indoor event. Thousands of people not practicing social distancing. Thousands of people not wearing masks. And then when we had a, a reporter from the Review Journal who uh, came on our show who interviewed the president, the president said he wasn't concerned because he was a far distance away from those supporters. What do you make of these campaign rallies, not just what took place on the Rose Garden, which we're now learning infected at least 10 people, but what do you make of these rallies that the president has done in recent weeks? It, the, the, to me, it's, it's beyond irresponsible. I mean, what do you make of this? Well, it, you're right. It's beyond irresponsible. It's reckless is what it is. And it's totally uh, inconsiderate and insensitive. You wear a mask not to protect you, but to protect those around you so you don't sneeze on somebody or breathe on somebody or spit on somebody. That's the purpose of the mask. But this administration only cares about itself, and they think it's politically to their advantage to be macho and not wear a mask and act like it's a partisan thing when it's really all about health and safety. Also, they have little respect for science. You've seen how the president has ignored climate change or has belittled the experts or even said, well, science doesn't know. And have you seen what he's done to Dr. Fauci, who's just been sidelined? You don't ever have meetings of that task force anymore or have a report on television. And the people who think that this is a way to show that they're tough and that they're Republican and they don't have to do it because they can recover, they just need to look at those statistics of 220,000 people who have died and think about their families and what this is saying to them. Yeah, no no question out there. I mean, what would you say to, and I guess there are some voters out there that are still undecided. I, I certainly find it hard to believe. But what would mm -hmm. you say to those out there that are still undecided that don't know who they're going to pick? I mean, what would you say to them for those that are even here in the state of Nevada? It is hard to imagine that people haven't made up their mind. but And the number is not very large if you look at the percentage for Biden and for uh, Trump and the percentage has consistently been higher for Biden and also among certain groups that didn't support Hillary to such an extent. But if you are undecided, I just say that you need to get good information. Don't look at the TV ads or 
or listen necessarily to the debates where they're talking over each other. Just look at the facts. And sometimes that's hard to get people to do. But um, the main thing I want people to do is vote and vote early. Have a plan to vote. You know, Nevada's done a good job of you can vote early. You can vote by mail. You can drop off your ballot. You can go on Election Day. There are going to be many sites where you can vote. And that's what's going to be critical. I want to go back to coronavirus, if I may. And Uh (coughs) excuse me, Florida Governor uh, DeSantis uh, he just made an announcement recently that he's okay with filling a stadium to full capacity. We know that Raiders games and, and any, all events that are taking place in Las Vegas, I thought they've done a very good job in, in limiting that, and there's no fans allowed uh, in Allegiant mm-hmm. Stadium to watch a Raiders game. What would you make of a guy like Governor DeSantis who wants to fill a stadium right now to capacity? What would you say to that? I just think that's a bad decision. You know, they already opened up the beaches for spring break and saw the numbers spike in Florida. It's got one of the highest rates of uh, occurrence of COVID of any state. But DeSantis is a big supporter of Donald Trump's, and I'm sure he's taken his lead from the president to show that, hey, we got this. We can handle it. We can recover from it. But we don't know if the president's recovered or not. And uh, this is a very uh, hard disease to predict or to control. And uh, I think, again, it's reckless. I, we did the smart thing in Nevada, closed down, even though it was so hard, it's such a tough decision, and the economy was devastated. But it was smart because we can't recover if we don't get a handle mm-hmm. on the virus. Because people aren't going to come for vacation if they don't feel like they're going to be safe. So yeah, I agree. I, you know, they got those cardboard cutouts at the baseball games and stuff of Marilyn Monroe and Queen Elizabeth. I wish they'd put a cardboard cutout of me out there at the Raiders <laughs> Stadium so I could cheer for the home team. Well, I'll tell you, the game, the, uh, I went to the game last week, uh, Congresswoman, a lot of fun. Oh. C- certainly weird, though, without fans in a, in a, an arena or stadium, but, uh, you know, you have to be safe. I know we all agree on that. Congresswoman, it is always a pleasure to have you on the show, and we know you're very busy, and we always appreciate your time. Great to hear from you. Stay safe, and thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Let's talk again right before the election. Love to. Love to, Congresswoman. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank Dita. you so much for your time. Pleasure. Yeah.